Hey, it's Kelly O'Connell, author and attorney with Knockout Podcast. Hope you're well today. I uh, had an idea and I wanted to get it onto paper and then do a little bit of a podcast for you. And re- things are really strange out there right now. Up is down, right is wrong, white is black, etc. So what I wanted to focus on tonight was something that struck me. Might not strike you the same way. Please leave a comment. Always feel free to leave a comment. And by the way, if you could add the podcast, subscribe to it, and then give it a thumbs up. But uh, the title of this one is American Feminism Occult Killing Afghani Women After a Betrayal and Abandonment. Now that might strike you as a little bit strange. And uh, you can't imagine... Um, Feminism being called a cult. On the other hand, what is it? Is it the truth? Is it an opinion? We treat it as the gospel here. You can't disagree with it. Now, everybody knows that a woman could turn her back on feminism and go home, stay at home, stay with the kids, give up a career and everything, but most people would feel sad for her. And yet... I think that there's a lot of dissatisfaction in our society and a great deal of it rotates around feminism. I'm not going to say it's caused by feminism because feminism is just a set of ideas, but I think it's the way that feminism is taken in, the way it's metabolized. And in short, in America, I think what it's done is given a default opinion of what life is about for women and it encourages all women to go out and get her career and then start counting your options. Whereas traditionally in the history of human beings, women married as soon as they could and had families and child, child, uh, the creation of children, if you want to put it that way, without getting into the details, uh, is easier when you're younger and it's easier to care for children when you're younger to a certain extent. You know, there is wisdom in the older mother. But my point being that it was in a very important thing to have a family. It was very important to have children. And as a matter of fact, in ancient society, in Rome, in Greece, in a lot of ancient societies, there was a penalty if you were a childless person. If you were a guy who didn't have kids, you had to pay a fine. So... It's always been important, and and I think one of the psychological factors that's driving a lot of dissatisfaction and and, um, unhappiness, loneliness, is this continuing move towards people atomizing in our culture. And we once were a family-oriented culture. We are really not anymore, and we're getting towards 50% of kids being born out of wedlock. And I'm sure that you know if you've done any research whatsoever, that the uh, percentage of kids who get into trouble, who are raised without a father, is sky high. Gigantic. And it's tremendously sad because I, I think a lot of women, a lot of mothers, these single mothers, they want what is best for the child, but they're not really thinking it through. They're not thinking... You know, what was it like when I grew up without a father? Because a lot of uh, kids that uh, or let's say women who um, they go on to have kids out of wedlock were raised that way, too. And you might say, well, they may not know any better, but I think people are also and you can you can share your opinion on this, but we're afraid of. We're nervous about things that we, we haven't been through. We, we don't understand. So I think feminism has had a an impact in America. Um, now for Afghanistan, think about this. Totally different situation, but I think that you've got to consider it at some point not from you know we tend to be cosmopolitan we're encouraged to be cosmopolitan in other words we're supposed to think about things globally right there's no nationality with people the people in the south below the united states are encouraged to come up and pretend that they're citizens already and we're supposed to look at other cultures and not judge them 
right? And I think cosmopolitanism is one of the issues here in Afghanistan in that you've got a culture that has been running on its beliefs for, let's go back to the year 600 when the prophet Muhammad was was getting going. I think he had his revelation in 610. So you have the year 600. Let's just use this year 600. Now it's not 1600 a thousand years later. It's closer to 1500 years, 14 or 1500 years. These people have been living the same way. And now you're going to show up and teach them about feminism. I mean, and then you're going to leave. You know, you're not there to defend them. You've taught these women. You're independent. You're a decision maker. Um, There's nothing more important than your decisions. If you want to have a career and, uh, and, and go and be a cop or an attorney to be a judge, uh, to be an engineer or whatever, that's up to you. And nobody can judge you for that. And then you've got the Taliban showing up again after 20 years and saying, we're here to judge you. So just just think about this. Truth and feminism. There are strong feelings against many folks regarding the absolute truth of feminism, a conviction not held by the Taliban. Now, just think for a minute. If you were to criticize feminism, especially in the woke culture, in the culture of... um, political correctness or whatever, you would be very reluctant to do it in a public setting in a place where people could identify you, right? Because it is accepted as an absolute truth. Now in Afghanistan, women judges now hide from male defendants seeking revenge. This is just a couple of days ago. In Kabul, the capital, a keen irony plays out. Tens of thousands of Afghan women who absorbed life lessons on women's rights from American tutors draw the devastating conclusion that to live as a feminist means dying by the hand of the Taliban. So, is this another tragedy of radical Islam? That's debatable, actually. Now, that, having said that, um, I even went back and kind of modified some of my stuff because I didn't want to come across saying that these ladies are feminists and they deserve to get, you know, harassed or attacked by the Taliban because I don't believe that. But I'll tell you what I believe here. Debating feminism, the abuse of women anywhere is deplorable, but especially when avoidable. So did blind allegiance to far leftism by American humanists invading Kabul put a curse on these poor women? And the question is, did American... American workers, American leaders come into Afghanistan with their atheism and did their atheism set them up for failure when the, when the women took this in uh, and they became feminists um, that's not really a religious viewpoint right? But it is actually, I'll tell you in a minute but think about that you're, you're, you're um kind of screwing around with somebody else's life in another culture and you really don't even understand it but you're going to go in there and tell them what's right and wrong so should this key secular teaching have been delivered like manna manna from heaven to traditional muslim girls afghanistan is 100 percent muslim pretty much and it's very primitive in some ways First, to many amazed Western liberals, it's still highly disputed whether the ideas encompassed in feminism are true and therefore beneficial to society. And yet virtually all American girls are raised as default feminists. But we can't be surprised in the least that Afghan women across the country are now being hunted down for feminism. And to see Nancy Pelosi, sea hag octogenarian, she's 80 years old, she's a sea hag, and women's right booster decrying these events, putting them down, saying we need to protect these Afghan women after hiding from the media while fundraising and then abandoning Afghan feminists. It illustrates America's hypocrisy. So here's a question. Let's just say that feminism became very popular in the Middle East. And it is popular in some places. Obviously, the more liberal they are, the more popular it would be. Where in Islam, Islamic teaching or Islamic society, would you get a Muslim feminism uh, statement? 
a defense. Well, that's a great question. Now, I'll tell you where feminism comes from. As best as we can figure it out, John Locke, when he wrote his letters concerning toleration, gave birth to ideas, the application of ideas that were used to defend and create and defend feminism. So it's hard to believe, especially a lot of feminists are very anti-biblical. They see it as the patriarchy. But Locke argues the Bible stresses toleration more than any other work. And therefore, Christians must be tolerant of other beliefs. And everybody should be tolerant. So if there was no Bible, there would be no modern feminism. See the book God, Locke, and Equality, Christian Foundations, and Locke's political thought. And you've got to go, you got to get a copy of this. It's a great book. And it's just absolutely amazing. But are there any human rights in Islam? All right, here's something I'm going to say that is going to blow your mind. There's no concept of human rights in Islam. While in our culture of forced inclusivity, where none are allowed to disparage any subgroups, except for Christians and whites, this idea might sound certifiably crazy, and yet a number of scholars have come to the same sobering conclusion. Now please go get Meyer's book, Islam and Human Rights. And the point is that if sincere care were being directed towards females, what if we really wanted to give females in Afghanistan the best possible treatment, right? And, and be realistic about it and think about the future. A dialogue should have been directed towards this topic of whether or not it's a good idea to force feminism in here. For one can argue giving Afghan females a direct dose of feminism, abstracted from any other foundation, would be to set them up in a false comfort, having no underlying substance to defend it. In other words, set them up for failure. Now, that might sound totally upside down to you but you know ideas come out of not just people they come out of a matrix of thought you know you've got people in the United States right now working on ideas and those ideas are coming out of the culture and in American history and European history John Locke was working on ideas at the same time that the founding fathers were and John Locke gave birth to liberalism they believe he's the person most at the center of it. And, you know, so the Enlightenment and liberalism and his ideas were then used by Thomas Jefferson to write the uh, Declaration of Independence. Now, people who came to Afghanistan, the foreign aid workers, many of them American Christians, they should have set aside any commitment to preaching women's rights and should have entered a debate over whether teaching modernism would take the place of a salvation message. Whether it could. After all, one needs a foundation for building a new worldview. Now, I'm trying to put a lot of ideas in this, in this podcast, but stick with me here. Hear me out before you flip out. While many will take umbrage or get angry at these thoughts, they are transparently accurate, if perhaps unpopular. So... Here's the question. If you're at a church, what are the chances you're woke? And I would say the chances are pretty good. You're somewhat woke. You're sensitive to race. You're sensitive to women. You're sensitive to gays. Now you take those ideas, which are, I would say, second or third tier um, enlightenment sociology. Not, they're, not, they're not really religious, but they're kind of sociological conclusions or psych, psych, out of psychology or something. Let's just say sociology. Now, you're working for a church, but you're a little bit woke and you want to bring your ideas into this foreign country and update them. So you teach them how to be woke. Don't react to gays. You know, don't judge people. Um, make sure women have rights. Everybody is equal. Everybody gets to vote, everybody gets to, to own property, everybody gets to go to court and be defended or to be, you know, prosecuted or whatever. Everybody's equal in court. All of these ideas that are outside of Islam. So you're, you're really laboring to help these people under these um, enlightenment, not, not enlightenment, but pro um, post-enlightenment ideas. Now, think about this. You have a military 
and you bring woke into it. And so what's the most important thing to woke? Well, currently it's trans, it's gay, it's women, it's all these different things. If that is key to your training, how prepared is your military going to be to fight? Now you might say, well, that's the truth. The truth is woke. The truth is trans. If we can't protect, protect trans, then we're nothing. Well, that may, might be true in somebody's opinion, but what if you're so woke that you lose the war? You see what I mean? So I don't think woke church is going to get where we need to go. Now, when I, all events, this short article can only scratch the surface of this fascinating issue. This short talk. Let's put it that way right now. America has fallen into rank error and apostasy. Now, this is according to the Christian Bible. As the church goes, so goes America. That's what the founders believed. One can hardly be surprised when apostate Catholic Joe Biden, having done a sack dance, this is what they used to do when they would sack the quarterback. The guy would do some sort of a dance and it became the craze. On the, he, doing a sack dance on the crave, grave of anti-abortion, decides to abandon Afghanistan, Americans left behind, and allies. So, you claim to be woke, you claim to be for all these great things, including abortion, including pro-gay, impl- including women, and the, then you leave all of these feminists behind. It's the craziest thing. It's like he, hate, like he hates feminists. So the medieval image of the blind leading the blind should adorn Americans' leftist salons and clubs. Fiat Lux, let there be light, uh, from the uh, Genesis. And let it shine upon Americans who are currently blinded by the golden calf, lust, apostasy. So we might believe in C again. I'm going to put wokeness in there. So anyway, that's that's the that's the idea, and I'm hoping that you enjoyed this. If you didn't, tear me up in the comments. I, I really get a kick out of it. If you can, uh, if you can go in there and mention something I did wrong, so that I can get a get thinking about it. All right, now I've got some uh, weird news for you. Okay, so I have some juicy, juicy um, weird news for you. All right, I was looking up Sea Hag and I came across this story. I couldn't believe it. There's a lady, and she looks like an 80 year old man. She was, let's see, probably around 60. Her nickname was Sea Hag, and she was living in uh, Florida. She was convicted and uh, for shooting her next door neighbor and gets 30 years in the slammer. She shot him. Why five times? Because he refused to give her a can of Bush light beer. And so, uh, people were pretty shocked around there. Now more Florida beer news. Alan Tangway was only 16 years old. He reportedly stabbed his 58 year old Palm Bay neighbor 37 times. So he could steal $6 for beer in Immokalee. A man was savagely beaten for his beer. In Kissimmee, these are all places in Florida, of course, Tiff, an argument over beer led to a stabbing, said the deputies. And Eduardo Adolfo Gonzalez pleaded guilty for murdering a man over a spilled beer. And that's just in Florida. But you gotta you gotta look up this lady. Carolyn Sarah Dukeshire, spelled as it sounds. The sea hag, and she looks like hell. She's got male pattern baldness for some reason. All right, here's another story that I found. I had to read six different articles to find out what happened. This is in Houston. Uh, A couple of people driving, and a woman comes along on a Harley Davidson and hits the mirror on one on a Honda and rips the mirror off and sideswipes two mirrors. So this lady disappears on the motorcycle. It's a lady in the motorcycle and a lady in the Honda. She disappears and they see her driving and they think that she pulled over to pull her license plate off so nobody could identify her. 
and the person in the Honda pulls over where she's at and says, please stop. We just want to get your information. She takes off. Her name was Shermit King, 33-year-old female. And she took off, and they were at a Kroger, which is a, you're not, don't live near him, a supermarket. She goes, she goes to go around behind the Kroger, and the lady in the, in the uh, Honda, J- Jula Ventran, looked like a guy, looked totally like a guy. And she's gay, and she's with her, her fiancé, another female. And they went behind her to try to catch her, and the woman either fell off the bike or they think probably the Honda hit the back tire, but it was only going about 20 miles an hour. The lady Shermit King falls off, gets run over. And they immediately called the police, but she was dead. So you think about it. I mean, you're taking your life at risk in your hands. Um, because of a, of a uh, mirror and a little paint job, a couple hundred bucks, you know. So I would say it's caused by Shermit King, but the and I, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Olivia, has asked me, t- since I'm an attorney, give details for these cases. So the case in this point, obviously the person didn't have a right to sideswipe him and you're not allowed to leave the scene of an accident. The people are allowed to go get information and to chase after her to try to get more information, but they can't take too much of a risk. And in this case, these people took too much of a risk and either ended up hitting the lady or at least were right behind her when she sides, she went around behind the store. She kind of hit the, the wall and then was immediately run over. So the lady who did the running over is going to get uh, some time behind bars or at least on probation. All right, here's another weird story. Woman accused of stabbing roommate to death being held in jail without bond. Now you're sitting here looking at her. Orlando woman, everything weird happens in te- in the Florida. Thelma Atterbury, now get this, 79 years old, was in court for the death of 76-year-old Suzanne Dickens. People heard the two women fighting Saturday morning. Police officer arrived. They found... S- Suzanne with multiple stab room wounds and uh, she's it says she's facing a first degree murder charge well first degree murder means premeditated it doesn't mean arising out of a fight if it arises out of a spontaneous event where there was no intention to murder then it goes down to second degree and all right so that that's your uh, your weird news of the day uh, thanks for tuning in. Well, um, appreciate it. High spot of my whole day is hanging out with you, even though it's separated by time, but we shouldn't let that get get in the way. I mean, we know that uh, Einstein took care of that anyway, right? Time is somewhat of an illusion. Thanks, and uh, please um, sign up. Give me, a, give me a thumbs up here. Give me a subscription, and I'll bring some another exciting and scintillating and titillating story for you tomorrow. Have a good night. Kelly O'Connell, Knockout Podcast. Ciao.